Gianni, you ready? Yeah. Um, and by the way, I'm a PhD student. Thank you. Thank you for uh, mentioning that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming to my talk. And my topic for today is making infium composite membrane for forward osmosis. As we are all familiar with reverse osmosis, it's a conventional membrane process for seawater desalination and wastewater treatment. In RO, we apply hydraulic pressure to overcome the osmotic pressure to force water across a semi-permeable membrane and reject the contaminants. But this process is thermodynamically limited meaning that it's very difficult to treat the high salinity water. So in my work, I focus on a new membrane process called forward osmosis. This process is very similar to reverse osmosis, but instead of using hydraulic pressure, we'll be using the osmotic pressure. We'll be using osmotic pressure to drive water across a semi-permeable membrane from a diluted free solution to a concentrated drought solution while rejecting the contaminants. And the drop solder can be recycled easily. What left us is going to be the clean water. This process requires no hydraulic pressure, so it's capable of, treating, of treating very challenging water. But the challenge in this forward osmosis process is the development of a good membrane for this process. A um, conventional membrane that's used for forward osmosis, the platform is called thin film composite membranes. It consists of three different layers. The selective layer needs to have very high selectivity, high, high order permeance, and the support layer needs to be thin, hydrophilic, and porous to reduce the mass transfer resistance in the supporting structure. And also it needs to be robust to be easy to handle with. And my work focuses on the development of support layer. So to address the hydrophilicity problem, instead of using a soft, a, a, uh, instead of using a polysulfone, that's a conventional material, I'll be using the sulfonated polysulfone. With introducing the sulfonic group, we can inch improve the hydrophilicity of this material. And then we make it into film with, by casting it and do the phase separation. But we figured that the membrane is very weak because of the swelling issue of sulfonated materials. So to maintain the robustness of the membrane, we'll be applying the polyester support underneath the membrane. So in this study, we studied two different PET non-bovens. One is conventional for RO, and one is more, uh, one is a thinner and open structure, and we wanted to create a fabric integral structure to reduce the thickness, but still maintain the robustness. And finally, we apply the polyester selective layer on the top surface using interfacial polymerization, and make it a thin film composite membrane. And in this study, we studied two, three different sulfonation degrees, and the water content angle results reveals the hydrophilicity of the membrane. It's showing that with an increase of the sulfonation degree, we have an increase of uh, hydrophilicity. We also studied the cross-sectional morphology of this membrane, showing that a fabric, as shown here, the the membrane, the, the non-woven fabric is embedded in the polymer structure. That can help us to reduce the thickness but still maintain the robustness. And finally, we conducted forward osmosis test to review the performance of this membrane. And first, we, we compared the, uh, we studied the impact of sulfonation degrees on this performance of the water flux. As we can see, with increase in the sulfonation degree, we have a higher water flux, indicating a more hydrophilic support is favorable for getting a high performance. And then we compare the membranes that are made from two different membrane platforms, from the conventional and the fabric integral. The fabric integral ones show much higher water flux, indicating the benefits of a thinning structure, which gives you reducing the mass transfer resistance in the supporting structure. And finally, we compared our best membrane with the commercial benchmark from HTI. It's showing two times increase in the water flux. <coughs> Another performance metric is the reverse soft flux. It should be as low as possible. And we can see that our membrane from fabric integral, it shows much higher reverse soft flux than the conventional ones. But when we compare it with this commercial benchmark, it still shows a very good performance. 
and overall we double the water flux but maintain the comparable reverse subflux. So finally, to conclude, in this work we combine the benefits of the sulfonated polysulfone and a fabric integral structure, making it a very high performance membrane for forward osmosis. With that, I'd like to thank you for your attention and I'm happy to answer any questions. Yes, stay in so that we